And yes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the spring membership workshop, or I should say the March membership workshop. I'm Sunita Filippo, and I'm Daniel Webster Council's new family engagement coordinator. And spring just started this week, so what are we going to talk about? We are going to spring into scouting and get ready to recruit more scouts as we get into the, the better weather months, at least cross our fingers that yes. hopefully we're done with snow, right, Jeanette? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope we're done with snow. Hope we're done. I, there might be a flurry, I think, this weekend around Saturday. Tuesday, yeah. Right? And but they said it might not stick. I don't know about northern. Yeah. You know, Let's, I'm Spears. hoping it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am sending out the no snow vibes at this point. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. So um we're springing into scouting, and where one of our themes this year is that we are getting back to basics. Um, we um, feel that the best way to go about inviting new families is, you know, doing the flyers, getting yard signs out, and getting into those schools and reaching out to those students um, before the end of the year. So some of the things that um, council efforts are doing to support um, everybody is, um, oh, here's Lori. I'll wait till Lori joins us here. And a lot of people have meetings Thursday nights. Welcome, Lori. Thanks for joining. We actually just got started. So we were just talking about um, what Daniel Webster Council is doing to support our units this year as we dive into spring into scouting. We are working on a direct mail or postcard that's going out to all youth that may have left us um, during COVID, whether their units start, stopped meeting or maybe they weren't comfortable meeting on Zoom or going in person. So we are sending out direct mailers that are inviting families back into scouting. Um, we have um, planned out joint scouting events and so we're working our way around the Granite State and it will be staffed with a professional and we encourage our um, volunteers to join the professional as well and the goal is to educate the public on scouting give them a fun activity that they can either take home or do there at the joint scouting event and then um hopefully sign up folks on the spot because most folks that come to a specific joint scouting event are um serious about registering into scouts we continue to provide our marketing materials and different strategies and tools in the membership and marketing hub and physical materials as well, like flyers, yard signs, bookmarks, stickers, the list goes on. And we'll have ongoing training via our membership workshops and coaching as well as needed. And we um, provide many physical recruitment activity options like the mobile base camp and all the items within the mobile base camp can be individually reserved as well. So our soccer darts, archery units, if you have a trained um, range master, we have a spike ball, which is really fun. A gaga ball pit can be um, reserved, but you do need a vehicle that, that can um, fit the big sections of it. Um, usually a minivan with all the seats down um, can fit actually the gaga ball pit in the back. Um, I've tested it myself. <laughs> And um, we have backyard bass as well, which is waterless fishing. There's a little delay with my, there we go. So some recruiting reminders, um, you know, we've, we're so engulfed in the program, right? That we often forget, you know, what it's like to be a new family, number one, but number two, what we didn't know when before we joined scouting. So remember that an average family doesn't know that ranks really exist. So if you're worried about recruiting late in the scouting year and catching up those kids so they can earn those ranks by the end of the year, do not worry about that. Parents aren't going to be thinking, oh man, I hope they get that tiger rank in two months. That's not what they're thinking about. They want to just get their family out outside especially, and having fun with other kids and other families. 
Remember the aim of scouting is character, personal fitness, leadership development, and citizenship and not advancement. Advancement is just one of the methods of delivering the program, not the aim of the program. And really now's the time, spring is a great time to recruit those little lions um, after June 1st and tigers. Um, lions can be registered as early as June 1st and the tigers can be re registered right now um, or I should say tiger age. And what's great about that is that they can participate, the tigers that are going into first grade can participate in day camp, which is a great time to really bond with the other members in their units and um, and take advantage of the summer activities. So that way the lion and tiger families can really um, get to know the other families and also it's a little bit of a slower time for most of our units. So it gives them a chance to maybe learn more about the leadership roles and maybe where they can fit in and help out as a volunteer. So step one, as we spring into scouting is to plan your spring programming if you haven't already. And hopefully you planned it in your June committee, you know, planning meeting for the year. And then if you don't usually have a summer program, if you are going to recruit in the spring, it's really important to plan summer programming. You don't want to promise all the fun of scouting and then have these kiddos join in March, April, or May, and then not have anything until September. So remember, you can also use those summertime activities to earn the summertime activity pack award as well. So um, be thinking about camp. Like I said, those tigers and, and scouts that are older can participate in, in day camp, um, resident camp if they're older, if they start getting in um, now. Um, you can plan camp outs, hikes, fun outdoor games and field days, park outings, picnics, barbecues, scavenger hunts, field trips, a police or fire station visit or other field trips. Um, other program ideas is, you know, every scout has to, earn the bobcat so that you can have them all earn bobcat. So that way at the end of the year barbecue, those kids are actually receiving a, a form of an, of an award. So they're not left out. Uh, the lions do not earn bobcat. Uh, you earn bobcat when you start as a tiger, as most of you know, but there is lion's honor and they could technically start working on that over the summer because it's similar to the bobcat idea, right? They're learning the oath and the law and all the um, basics of the program. You can work on um, elective adventures, um, you know, throughout the rest of the spring and into the summer. For the older kids, this is a great time to work on merit badges. You could have merit badge workshops. You could have some adults, you know, really reach out to the adults in your unit and see, um, you know, who is able to become a merit badge counselor, um, you know, what their specialties are, and really um, schedule those out throughout the spring and summer for the older kids to work on. And you can do things like orienteering, scout skills, um, games, and really team building because spring and summer is a great time for your unit, for the dance and patrols, et cetera, to really get to know each other um, and just learn more about each other before jumping into the busyness of the fall. So um, the next step is obviously promote yourselves and be visible in your community. You want to register your joint scouting events on the Membership and Marketing Hub. Um, when you do that, our team can help promote it. This year, we're really focusing a lot on promoting. I think a lot of us, you know, assume that people know about scouting. Oh, scouting's out there. Oh, I was in the parade. They know about us. But we really have to almost feel like we're overdoing it, right? And start really promoting joint scouting events all around New Hampshire. So people who wanna join can find a joint scouting event near them. Um, we're gonna be doing this on our Facebook pages. So if you register your joint scouting event, um, you know, with plenty of notice, we can get them out on our Facebook pages. We can put them in on community pages and we can also um, get them out to local newspapers and and, and see if they can put that in their community news or in their editorial sections. Um, again, we offer bookmarks, yard signs, um, you know, to, to get out there. And, you know, and now's a great time as the snow is melting and knock on wood, as Jeanette and I were talking about earlier, hopefully no more snow or significant <laughs> snow, right? <laughs> and um, 
you know, don't forget to check out your local libraries, book those meeting rooms and have some posters and signs hung up and, and talk to people about scouting and be prepared for them to sign up that evening. Um, you know, contact your schools and try to get involved in some of the school activities. Um, if there's more book fairs going on or field days um, or um, other PTO events that maybe the scouts can go and help volunteer, just being out in the schools in uniform or having your class B shirts and hats on um, is a great way to get the word out about scouting. And then a lot of fire stations have open houses that's a great time to go and maybe have some bring a buddy cards with you. Maybe they'll allow you to set up a little table or an area to welcome families and um, just be there to um, tell them about scouting. And, and, you know, maybe the, there's a firehouse around the corner from you and you can say, Hey, we meet five minutes away from here. It's super convenient. And of course, don't forget to request the flyers and get those out into your schools. And we can also help you with digital flyers as well. A lot of schools have started doing, um, going more towards that route with digital flyers. Beascout.org. I think we mentioned this almost every time we do a workshop, um, but this is, you know, the public facing site where families most likely will find you. So make sure you go in and you update your pins. If you haven't looked at it since we chartering, make sure you take a peek and that all the current contact information is correct, that your website is still working and that it's linked to your website. Add your Facebook page if you have a public Facebook page, um, which I suggest that every unit has a Facebook page to, to promote their unit. Um, and in where you can add more details in your PIN, make sure you add your meeting days and times. If your mm -hmm. debts meet on different dates, you know, you can say varies upon age, but, you know, our PAC meetings are once a month on Thursdays at 7 p.m., it's really important to add these specifics because we've noticed that when people have the days and times there and they may be familiar with your pack slightly or they at least know where your pack or troop meets, they're very likely to just join on the spot online. And it really takes that, um, that back and forth out with, when do you guys meet? What time do you meet? Where do I go every week? And kind of delaying the joining process, it kind of gets rid of that roadblock. So definitely put all the details that you can in um, that little text box, including, you know, the fun things that you do. You know, we're pack 19 and every spring we have a rain gutter regatta and we love the Pinewood Derby and we go hiking and field trips to the um, aviation museum and the museum of science and things like that. Be really specific with some of the fun things that you all love to do, because then it will um, obviously get them excited about joining your unit. So speaking of social media and websites, don't forget to update your website. If it needs updating, make sure that the link is working and that when you go on Google, that when you search your unit, that it does pop up. Post often on your social media pages. And don't forget to promote your joint scouting events and your unit. You know, if you are doing community service, if you do a spring cleanup at your tribe organization, take lots of pictures and make sure you're promoting your unit on those public community social media pages. Um, and, you know, always have what we call a call to action. So if you're promoting a community service project, you know, Troop 19 did a spring cleanup at First Baptist Church and planted a whole new flower bed. If you'd like to do some fun community service projects and join us for, um, you know, some hiking trips and whatever else you want to list off, you know, visit us here at this website, or you can put the link to your Facebook page. So that way you have a place for folks to find you and learn more about your group. And, you know, a lot of people often ask, well, we have this social media page or we have this website, but what do I post on there? What information do I put on there? You know, what we like to say is be a community resource. It doesn't always have to be spe specifically about your unit or about scouting. Be a resource for your community. So if there's a snow day, post about the snow day. Maybe you had a meeting outside in the snow and you can kind of add some fun pictures of your group in the snow and say, hey, hope you're enjoying the snow like we do. Or maybe your unit even camped out in the winter. That's a great time to promote that and say, hey, you know, Nashville Public Schools has a snow day 
And, you know, we survived this camp out in 30 degree weather in the snow, right? Um, be a resource, you know, for those that, um, you know, go to school and that live in your community. Maybe you post about um, summer safety tips, uh, water tips, you know, how to be safe around the water, some simple first aid, you know, skills, maybe, uh, you know, as the time changes with daylight savings, don't forget to check your fire alarms um, and, you know, and other, you know, the batteries all around your house. Don't forget to, to set your clocks, right? This is all things that you can post and you're just, you're just making it so um, you are coming up in the algorithm, so, that, so to speak. So people will start seeing you more and more in their feeds. Some resources that we have here is, of course, the Membership and Marketing Hub, the Daniel Webster Council Membership and Marketing Hub. There's a QR code there. And these slides will be available um, on the Membership and Marketing Hub as well as the recording of the workshop. And then we do have um, a Troop Activities Guide. Um, it's a great guide of um, tons of fun things that you can do with your troop. Um, and then a den, the Den Leader Guides are available um, there's a lion leader guide and then it goes all the way up to, uh, we Below's through that link as well, um, which is a great resource, especially for our newer leaders. And then as usual, if you have any questions or you're not sure who to contact, please email support at nhscouting.org. That's the best way to get someone to, um, answer your questions or to, to provide support. And then if you do have anything membership wise, obviously membership at nhscaling.org is uh, where, you'd like, where you would like to email as well. I feel like I spoke really fast. I get excited, so I <laughs> really fast. <laughs> um, <It was> perfect. <laughs> oh, thanks, <Yeah. laughs> For all these on the go parents. <laughs> I know, I was saying to Jeanette, cause we started a little bit late and I'm like, here, I'm keeping you and I know Everyone has those things to do, right, Lori? <laughs> I'm sorry. I totally um, had it in my head. The meeting was at 730, which was wrong. <laughs> That's okay. You joined at a, I kind of waited and Jeanette was patient with me because I was like, <laughs> I, you know, I don't, I want to see if other people will come on. And we did have more registered, but I know March has been a really, really busy, intense month for a lot of people. And, and I know it's been a sick month too. Yeah. So, like, everybody's getting sick. <laughs> That is so true. I talked to someone, yeah, I talked to someone, my daughter actually stayed home today. So uh -huh. I, yeah, I definitely feel that. And my husband woke up this morning and it was so funny because I have a, I have like a sixth sense and I get it from my dad. I looked at him last night and I'm like, you don't look right. Are you feeling okay? He's <laughs> like, I'm fine. He woke up this morning sick. No, oh. <laughs> I, I knew it was coming. So he's like, oh, you're on to something. I'm like, oh, I wish I wasn't, but I'm sorry. Right. So I definitely hear that. But I appreciate you guys joining. I wish it was a bigger crowd because I love when we all can share some <laughs> ideas. Um, but if you have ideas or questions, I'd love to hear them. Sure. I wrote down a lot of your little notes that I was thinking of ideas as you were talking. Oh, great. <laughs> like, what, do you, what can I implement here, there, and like we do in hooks that we do whole home day and we try to get out there at any of the community events. I like the scavenger hunt idea. Mm. And I'm like, how can we adjust that to have kids all excited to find scout related items around like old home day or whatever yeah. that they're doing. That would be pretty fun. That'd be really and fun. And you could get like a little, easy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And it would be really easy to set up too. That's yeah. true. And some, you could even use a scavenger hunt, like, you know, for the older kids, um, you know, maybe them using compass skills or interior too. And on the way they find these fun little, you know, prizes or little things that they're collecting too. Right. That would, because yeah. I know when we went to, we camped in October for a night at Carpenter and so we used the scavenger hunt as the opening activity as people were arriving. So it's like, here, go find some stuff <laughs> exactly. from, from running wildly through the site while their parents are trying to set up the tents. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love that. It does. It keeps them busy. And like you said, it's a pretty easy thing. And it's also another great activity to have when the when the kids bring their non-scouting friends. 
Right. You know, and that's the thing that, you know, if we could all get into kind of like the habit and the cadence of, you know, okay, if they, let's have them all bring friends once a month and that once Mm -hmm. a month you have, you know, a field day or especially in the spring or the scavenger hunt, um, or, you know, you have, you have these things kind of planned ahead of time that are really quite easy and quick to plan. You know, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Right. Uh, it makes it easy to really have those effective recruiting events where you get those kids interested and they want to stay because they're having fun. Right. I think that's why at the beginning of the year, I had five scouts that carried over from last year. And within a month, I jumped to 14 because kids would come along and they were having so much fun, even though I was like, so stressed because they love to run around (laughs) and that's not me (laughs) I still have 13 of them one kid I'm not sure he's telling his friends he quit but he's telling my son oh no I'm coming but his mom's not emailing me back anymore so but I I was really ahead on getting ranking I use the achievements to plan my meetings and if they get them done they get them done um but to br- to really carry the program through and it helps it helps me well i had some kids that went to all the meetings and so they were almost ready to get their next badge so we started doing electives and if they weren't there then they just don't do that elective unless and the other stuff i either try to implement it somewhere in my meeting trying to keep it interesting and telling them hey if you want to bring someone that's great and as long as they're still having fun. Exactly. And I think that's the thing. I think we often make things harder on ourselves, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, oh, it has to be this big event and we have to earn the whole, you know, this whole, um, you know, adventure in this one meeting or we, you know, or we have to do these certain, you know, steps today or whatever it may be. And, and you really have to follow the lead of your scouts, And, you know, and and your other leaders, you know, I mean, maybe that's, you know, they're just not up for it that day, or maybe, you know, maybe they can't sit down quite as long and kind of have like, um, you know, a, a fun activity in your back pocket that kind of gets them moving for like a movement break and things like that. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, definitely, you know, I, I I love what you're saying. And it's so true. I, I think all of our leaders, rightly so, plan the program year around the advancements and the, and the steps to, to get there, which, which is great. And a lot of the kids really love that, you know, they want to know that they're working towards something. They want to get that next badge and their next, you know, the next belt loop and the whole fun, you know, the whole nine yards. Right. Um, um, but, you know, sometimes, you know, as we get to spring and summer, you know, we can do that fun stuff. We can do the electives. We can do things that, maybe aren't directly linked to scouting, but, you know, as they play games and do field day and things like that, that's teamwork, that's team building, that's good sportsmanship and things like that, that are all really important. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's so much good stuff in there too. (laughs) Yeah, there is. It's just, there's so much fun to be had, especially in the good weather. And we have noticed we've done some, we've really dug deep into you know, who has done fall and spring recruiting and what that looks like numbers, numbers wise. And the, um, the districts and the units that have done spring recruiting definitely see a big uptick in numbers and, and are usually our stronger units as well. So it's Mm -hmm. really important to, you know, get everybody, um, you know, and not just recruiting spring and summer, but really just keeping it in mind year round, because really we can welcome scouts year round. And like I said, you don't really want to invite someone like in June, if you're not going to do any summer, right. you know, programming, but it kind of um, makes it fun for everybody. If there's some events they can look forward to and, you know, just be upfront with the new families that they're joining in, in June or July. Well, we do the parade and we have old home day and we have national night out. Um, it is a slower time, but we would love for you to, you know, it's a great time to join and get to know everybody you know, and just being honest with what the program looks like too. Right. Giving, I find giving them um, a schedule to look forward to is yeah. very helpful. It mm-hmm. makes it easier for them to commit. It's very true. Having those calendars, because hopefully, you know, you've planned your year or so in June. So they mm-hmm. have those calendars um, of the all the upcoming fun stuff. That's a good point. It's a great thing yeah. to have. Yeah. 
Well, thank you very much. Thank you both so much. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. <laughs> the problem. The flyers. Hi. Oh, the flyers. Yeah, the Jeanette. flyers. Are you still going to request like a two-week heads up? Um, a two-week heads up to is um, useful because um, I'm not in the office every day. Um, so we kind of have to, um, you know, make sure we have everything. And we we make templates now for the back too. So, um, you know, it's just, a, it's not a huge process, but the two week notice is really great um, to make sure that we, you know, get it all right and get it out there for you guys. And the den leader stuff is all updated because I know through Slack, we got it. And yes. it's like, so it's all the den leader guides are brand new. So that's going to be an awesome asset to our, our, our That's cats. nice. Yes. It really I was like, is. so excited that they came out. I'm like, yay. <laughs> and then when I saw it. I was like, oh, thank goodness. Cause we're there. We have a, a bunch of unit, you know, we have some units that are coming in that are new too. And, um, and so it's great because everything's at their fingertips, which is nice. Yep. Yep. If you have any units that maybe want somebody to come in and be a little bit of a mentor, I may have time to do that. Oh, Lori, that would be so awesome. We would definitely love that. Um, always looking for the experienced leaders because I've noticed, you know, it's one thing to kind of give them the tools and, you know, say like, okay, like this is how you plan out a meeting or this is how, but really kind of having someone there and guiding them through is definitely key. Right, and, and someone encouraging them saying, yeah, you're doing fine. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of, gets, try to get rid of that self-doubt. Yes, I'm, I try to mentor the last few years with our pack. I've been the line scout coordinator and oh, I try goodness. to pick out which parents I think are going to be more the ones that are more involved or really good with the kids and like, hey, why don't you run this meeting and try to get a leader out of it? Well, this year we had a leader, but we were able to find a second leader, I think, because she there's another woman that did really well so i'm like there's your co-leader <laughs> so it's awesome. like really because a lot of times they don't have a chance to see what other parents are doing and they don't have it they're too busy oh. watching the children and getting the, keeping them involved that they don't see which parents really want to be involved That's, even if you're yeah. giving them little jobs here and there some That's parents just never want to be involved but then you get the ones that do you just get a encourage them sometimes it's just talking to them it's yep. true i mean i it was going to be a thing that i mean it's so funny when i look back but <laughs> cub scouts was going to be something that my husband did with my son and mm -hmm. yeah boys thing because i was doing girl scouts with my daughter and um he came now home you. <laughs> i know now it's like it's like my whole life <laughs> <laughs> he came home one day and he said um the pack really needs a popcorn kernel and I thought you'd, you'd be good at it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like that was oh, the one thing like, you know, like the, like, you know, a really hard job to jump into. And I knew nothing about scouting at the time at all. I mean, I didn't even know we had a pack in our hometown and it was five minutes away from me. <laughs> and I tell folks that a lot because here, you know, I've been, People a don't know. yeah, I've been a volunteer for 10 years and now I work for council and everything, but you know, 10 years ago, I, scouting didn't even come to the forefront of not even close to my mind. I was like, Oh gosh, he can't do sports. Mm -hmm. What else are we going to do? And a, an a acquaintance I've actually posted on Facebook and an acquaintance said, why don't you come to our pack meeting? And I'm like, I didn't even think about scouts. Mm -hmm. you know? And so I tell um, fellow leader leaders that all the time, because I think we all assume people know we're here. Mm -hmm. you know? And they don't, you know, because I was someone who was on the PTO, stay at home mom, hugely involved in our community here in Nashua and didn't know. Wow. Yeah. And we just assume everybody knows. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. And that's dangerous, right? Because, <laughs> you know, it, it's they they don't. And I think if we think we're pushing it too much or advertising too much, we're probably doing it just enough. Right. Um, you know, so definitely. And it's like, you got to hit all the, um, you know, all the avenues possible, you know, the yard signs and flyers getting into the schools, 
getting on Facebook, you know, having the website and really kind of, you know, and, you know, in person talking to folks and, you know, even within your own units and saying, hey, do you have five non-scouting families that you can think of that you can send out an invite to our next meeting? You know, mm-hmm. and if each person had five people, think how quickly that would grow a unit, you know. That would if, really grow. Yeah. yeah. The opportunities there. Yes. And it's as simple as, you know, them emailing or knocking on their neighbor's door and saying, hey, you know, we're part of, you know, PAC 21. And, um, you know, why don't you come and visit with us? No obligation, but we're going to have a family fun night. There's going to be a barbecue, right? You can do like maybe a barbecue or something or a pizza night. And mm-hmm. it gives you a chance to talk to the parents too. And like, yeah. and Lori, as you were saying, great opportunity to, you know, kind of scope out the parents and say, hmm, that person seems to be good with the kids. That right. person seems to be really outgoing. Maybe they're a good fundraising person. Maybe they're a good new member coordinator once we once they get to know the program. Um, mm-hmm. You know, all that. And, and that's a thing too, which I didn't mention earlier, which I should have is we are aiming to have every unit um, recruit a new member coordinator for their unit. And that person is a person that is outgoing and friendly and is really familiar with the scouting program and really familiar with that, with their specific unit. And um, that person is going to be the person that, um, you know, can help plan some of the recruiting activities and meetings, but also be the person that welcomes the new families in. It's like, oh, um, oh, you're the, you know, you're going into first grade. You're going to be a tiger. The tiger den is right over here. Let me introduce you. And, you know, kind mm-hmm. of be that person that onboards those new families. And then as new families come in to make sure that they have all the information they need to register and hopefully register at that visit. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's definitely an, an important role that we want to get filled this year. I'm like looking in my, the back of my head, who would be good for that role? (laughs) It's like, since Jillian moved on, it's like, we have all these roles that aren't covered anymore. (laughs) I know. And she, I know her family was a force. She's a force for sure. I know she'll be missed at the pack. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, she's, she's been great. And it is tough because we had a, a bunch of our strong leaders all cross over at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, and we had other people in place but you know it's always nerve-wracking when those changes happen and you try to and it does get you you know thinking okay who else do I need to get to know a little bit better because I'll make my circle a little bit bigger here Um, (laughs) and that's what we've been you know I'm in a troop that we've had leaders like the same leaders for a really long time Mm -hmm. and um, like their kids have aged out and everything so I didn't want to hurt. I'm the committee chair and I, and, you know, it's like, I'm not hurting anyone's feelings. I don't want to get rid of anyone, but like, let's try to, you know, introduce some of the um, newer parents, you know, into some of these things in case you decide that maybe you don't want to keep doing this for another 20 years. (laughs) Right. (laughs) You know, someone else um, should probably learn how to do it. And, and plus it just, you know, it's important to have, um, it's good to have people shadowing so yeah. that you're mm-hmm. not, they don't have three months experience of really not doing anything. And okay, this is your role now. That makes it really hard on people. I think people are more likely to want to help and volunteer if they know that they'll have training, you know, that they'll be eased into it. It's not like this mm-hmm. high stress situation, right. you know, and, and you're right. I think if they can shadow someone for like at least a full year in scouting, Mm-hmm. I think that's really key because that's what that, that's what we tried to do too, and I know a lot of our units already do that um, if they have the opportunity. Um, and I know that's hard because volunteering right. is is tough. Um, it's a tough state right now coming out of COVID. But um, but if they you know if, if we're up you know for upfront with them and say you know you know what I think you'd be a really great fit for this role. Why don't you shadow? Lori for a little bit um you know if it's not the right fit you know we'll move on we can move on to something else and and maybe something else would fit better for you but if you're feeling like it's a role that you would like you know you have a whole year 
with Lori or two years was always great, right? <laughs> if you if you get, right. me. um, I know that that would be really a real treat, right? And <laughs> um, and then that way, you know, when you move on, they're really comfortable. And right, it's second it's, nature. Yeah, it's a seamless transition, which is which is really the and ultimate goal. And they're ready to train the next person. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's so true. Yeah. So session planning is definitely important as you guys know. Um, you know, that's what keeps a unit healthy is that seamless transition and that, the, you know, the programming doesn't stop. The fundraising doesn't stop because of, you know, a volunteer struggle. Um, and, um, you know, it, it just keeps everything seamless and keeps things moving in the right direction for sure. And it's all part of a successful unit. Mm-hmm. Very much. I hope that was helpful. I'm very helpful. It was yeah. a nice meeting. Yeah. I don't usually talk on Zoom meetings. I know. I usually just don't. observe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you decided to. <laughs> and um, I I really appreciate you guys being here. And and there are um, other workshops recorded on. Um, the membership and marketing hub under workshops and the slides are all um, downloadable under each workshop too. Um, so if, you know, you wanted to save some of the ideas or the um, QR codes and things like that, they're all in there. Perfect. Cool. Well, this has been a lot of helpful information. I appreciate that you're doing this. Oh, yeah. thanks Lori. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad it's helpful. That's, that's why I like doing it. I like to, make things easier try to make things easier for for folks <laughs> now we got to get more people out <laughs> yes <laughs> definitely yeah spread the word let everyone yeah. know how much you enjoyed it or what you got out of it and um and hopefully i'll see you guys next month all right well thank all you right. have thank you have a great night you guys bye. thank you you too thank you bye bye, -bye. bye. thanks jeanette you're welcome bye bye bye, -bye.